back on TYT Sports. Uh, if those who watched the Sacramento Kings and DeMarcus Cousins dropped 55 points and 10 rebounds, and I think he nailed at least five three-pointers in that game, a, a, the first time in Sacramento Kings history that they've had a player with multiple 55-point games. Multiple. Uh, he's going to set every record probably known to man in the Sacramento Kings if he's kept it pretty much in prison under the Kings organization. It's really unfortunate that he's still on this team. I defend DeMarcus Cousins a lot. Uh, because I think that there is a narrative already painted from years ago because of his rookie season where he had the most personal fouls and he gets a lot of technicals and he's a problem in the locker room. I think he's just a little bit overexertive on the court. It leads to technicals. And then the media paints a locker room problem narrative, a head coaching problem narrative, and they pin it all on Cousins. I actually don't think that's the case. I think it's a, it's a misinformed narrative when it comes to the Sacramento Kings. But I do hope, for God's sake, that he gets out of that organization at any point because when you look at the, the social media of the U Team USA basketball over the summer, the 2016 Olympics, and how much fun, how much he wasn't a problem with those guys, with Jimmy Butler and Kyrie Irving and, and Kevin Durant and DeAndre Jordan because maybe it's the environment that's toxic and maybe it's not DeMarcus Cousins. It relates back to what Dave Chappelle used to say. Maybe it's the environment that's crazy and not me. What was amazing about the game yesterday is he got ejected and then unejected. And his responses were amazing. Marcus, first I'm going to start with the technical that got you ejected, that was then rescinded. What, what happened there? I've never seen anything like that. It's ridiculous. It's obvious what's being done out here. It's on a nightly basis. I hope the world can see now what's really going on out here, because it's getting ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. But did it come out of your mouth accidentally? Is that yes. what happened? Yes, man. It's, this is ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. Demarcus, their game plan obviously tonight was to be physical with you and get in your head. You definitely held your composure throughout the game. How important was that for you guys to be able to pull out this win? That was light, man. I know, I know what their game scheme is every night. They're hyping up their big man over there. He thinks he's a stopper. It's not happening. I, I brought him back to reality. So he got uh, very passionate after getting an and one for his 54th point of the game. It came at a crucial time. He looks at the Portland Trail Blazers bench, kind of, and screams not at them. Was it taunting? Probably. Was it enough to get him ejected? No. And his mouthpiece fell out. And they ejected him because they thought that he threw his mouthpiece at the bench. So he gets ejected, and he just goes right to the locker room. Doesn't he yell at the refs again? He just goes, what? How can you do this? And then walks to the locker room, or runs to the locker room. While that's happening, the ref goes up to head coach Terry Stotts of the Portland Trail Blazers. And he says, did he yell? He goes, yes. He goes, did he throw his mouthpiece? And Terry Stotts said no. So they brought him back onto the court, and he got unejected, where he finished the game. There's this post-game interview uh, right after the sideline interview where they cut his mic out after about 45 seconds because he starts talking about, you see this, you see what happens on every night, that the refs, they're probably out to get me, that type of thing. Here's that. What's up, my friends? <laughs> hey, friends. <laughs> Man, I miss you guys. How you guys doing today? Doing good. All right, all right. Let's do it. I'm great, man. I'm great. Glad to see you guys. Can you describe that moment when you left the court and straight where someone's back? Um, I don't really know what happened. Um, I was caught up in the moment of what I was going to tear up in the locker room. <laughs> and they called me back. Like, they rushed me back, so I had to... They told me I had to come shoot the free throw, so I tried to, you know, refocus or whatever. That was, that was weird. That was a weird scene. I've never experienced that before. Did you make it back to I did. Like I said, I was in the process of, like, finding something to tear up. But <laughs> just didn't quite get there. What was it like coming out of that tunnel of the ovation you got? I, I think I know how Paul Pierce felt. And then even better was all the smiles in the locker room where he kind of acknowledged that the reporters and him have this weird relationship, and he's like, no, man, no, no, I'm not biting tonight, don't worry. I'm good, I'm good. He goes, like, what was going through your head? And he talks about how I ran to the locker room to see what I was going to destroy. And then they're like, yo, DeMarcus, come back. And he's like, what? So I went back and refocused. <laughs> Which is remar it's rem it's remarkable. He got a $50,000 fine, by the way, for berating the Sacramento Bee reporter. Um, and they went on to win that game. And uh, I think the world's out to get DeMarcus Cousins. Yeah. Brett's here with me, by the way. He was hanging out. Yes, I am here. 
Uh, yeah, Thoughts? It's, t- it's tough to be DeMarcus' cousins right tough. now. And all those things you were saying about the Olympics, mm-hmm. it's like, I don't know if you've seen videos where they take animals who've spent their whole lives having experiments done on them yes. and then release them into like a nice protective habitat where they first kind of walk out and they're like, you can live a life like this? Yeah, it's like the Truman Show. And then they're like <laughs> still kind of like traumatized, but there are a few moments where they get to act like, you know, wild gazelles or whatever. They're just like, yes, oh my God, it's so good and nice and happy, thank goodness. That's what it was like to watch DeMarcus during that time. But this, it's been a rough week. It's been a rough week, and it's refreshing, but it's been a rough career for DeMarcus Cousins. And I, again, I think it's an environmental thing. It is some of it on him. Yes, he painted himself in a bad light his uh, his first year in the league. He had the most fouls. It was like 264 personal fouls that he had. He got fa- he still fouls out a decent amount. I think a lot of it's physicality. I think if DeMarcus Cousins played in the 80s and 90s, none of this would be an no. issue. I think that social media is ruined in what some people's eyes of DeMarcus Cousins' uh, personality and mentality towards things, and I truly believe that he is just playing in the wrong era because right. he would have dominated the same way in even the early 2000s, late 90s, and those fouls wouldn't be a problem. Dennis Rodman was no different. But Dennis Rodman also, you know, hangs out with the prime with the the prime leader of North Korea. What the is deer it? leader. The deer leader of North Korea. He I think the leader. new one has isn't the deer leader. He I think they each his, get their own like adjective. And, uh, I mean, Dennis Rodman has more rings than uh, DeMarcus says he also broke his penis three times. Happens. There's a Vice News story to which my own family once texted me saying, I've never watched anything more cringeworthy than you having to talk about Dennis Rodman's broken penis. Hmm. Interesting. I had to bring it back to it. We talked a lot about Wiener today. And you're all Wieners. It's like the Weenie Club from Weenie Hut Jr. from SpongeBob. Mm-hmm. Uh, every time, if I could sneak, uh, my goal in life is to sneak one SpongeBob reference into every show. Nice. And I think I'm doing pretty well at that. Uh, DeMarcus Cousins, man, he should probably get traded. Should probably sign somewhere else in free agency. The Kings, man, that organization is so defunct, even with Dave Yeager. George, I think how you pronounce it, but I like Dave Yeager better. He was the Grizzlies head coach. He's coaching there now. George Carl experiment was a nightmare with them. Putting Cousins around Rajon Rondo last year and guys like Matt Barnes this year is not going to help DeMarcus Cousins. Put him around Jimmy Butler and Kyrie and Kevin Durant and good, talented players who make you a better player in yourself, and you're a happy guy. So uh, let's stop making this narrative out to be that DeMarcus Cousins is like the biggest bully in the league or he's an asshole. I don't think he, I don't think he is. Yeah, and I do agree. Free that, boogie. Yeah, get him around Kevin Durant because he needs more support on the floor. <laughs> he needs a little more support. Oh, anything that would make him hate. I was going to say, like, if people go, like, what Eastern Conference team would, would DeMarcus Cousins go to? Like, oh, send him to the Cavs. Just send him to the Cavs. Send they need the to build Cavs. that team out a little bit. They need some more help. And then dissolve the rest of the NBA. Give us four teams. Comment below, like, favorite, subscribe to the channel, ding the bell or something. At Brett Eric on the Twitter and on the Instagram. You can check out a lot of different YouTube. You have a couple channels too, don't you? Just Video do them blog. all. Just do them all. It's all in the description. Go watch a thousand viral video film schools right now. I like, see, I, I, I like viral video film schools. I'm a fan. Yeah.